2007 through 2013 Acura MDX Bank One Catalytic Converter Replacement. I'm Brian Essen from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing that cat. Okay, to get started, we need to remove the upstream oxygen sensor here, the Bank One oxygen sensor. So I'm going to reach around back, and it's right about here. And I'm going to use an oxygen sensor socket, a little extension here, and a ratchet. And uh, I'll reach around back and put it over the sensor and crack it free. I'm going to leave the sensor plugged in, and I'm just going to twist it out. And you help twist the wire around. And once you get it out, you're going to leave it twisted like this. So when you go back in, you'll just put it back in the thing, and you'll twist it, and it'll untwist all the wires and go right back in. Now you're going to want to get the front of the vehicle up in the air as high as you can. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up and go ahead and remove the right front wheel. Now looking through the hole here, you can see the cat that we're going to be working on. But first thing we're going to need to do is remove this little cross brace. So there's going to be four 14 millimeter bolts you're going to remove and one 10 millimeter bolt. And go ahead and remove those bolts and set the brace aside. To save time, I recommend you use power tools like this Milwaukee M18 Fuel 3 8 impact gun. Tools like this will save you so much time and effort. Well worth the uh, investment. Next, you're going to want to soak the exhaust manifold bolts in a, a penetrating oil. I recommend PB Blaster. It's the brand we use here at How To Automotive. And you're going to spray the nuts and bolts that hold the, cat, uh, the crossover pipe here on. So you're going to start in the back back there. And then you'll move up towards the front. Get the three here. And then there's going to be three more up in the very front towards the radiator. So we're going to start in the front and remove the three nuts on the pipe here and then follow it back and then there's up vertical there's going to be three more nuts we're going to remove and then we'll follow the pipe back and then there's going to be three more nuts back here at the, the rear cap we're going to remove after that we're going to remove the two 12 millimeter nuts that hold the hanger and then we're going to lower the pipe down so once you get the pipe out it's going to look like this you'll just set aside for now now i'm going to remove the rear oxygen sensor the downstream sensor and you're going to need a short crow's foot style sensor socket to get this off. I'll link this up in the description of the video. So you'll slip it on over here like this. Then you put your ratchet on here, crack it free, and then you're going to spin it out, leaving it all plugged in just like, like we did the top one. So now that it's removed, I'll just let it hang right here out of our way. So now we're going to remove the support bracket bolt right here that bolts onto the cat. And then we'll loosen up the other bolt and then we'll just swing it out of our way. Now working through the side here, I'm going to uh, spray penetrating oil on the catalytic converter. So I'm going to reach up and spray the top four bolts. So now with a healthy coat of PB Blaster, my next step is I'm going to remove the cotter pin and nut for the tie rod here. And, and then I'm going to strike the, the spindle here with a hammer and that'll pop the tie rod free. And that'll give us a little more additional room to get the cat out of the uh, car once we get it unbolted. Now you just let it hang out of your way. So we're going to be installing a genuine uh, Honda catalytic converter. So I wanted to show it to you so you could see how the top bolts are mounted. So we're going to lower the vehicle down and remove those top bolts. So with the vehicle down, we're going to reach over the back and use a, a 12 millimeter deep socket and a flex head long ratchet like this to get to those bolts. So you'll reach around the back and you'll have to kind of reach for them and feel for them. They're going to be a, a kind of a blind, uh, you won't be able to see them. You'll just have to do it by feel. So you'll put the ratchet on there, you'll crack it free. And then what I recommend you do after you crack the bolts free is switch over to a short ratchet, flex head ratchet like this. And then it's much easier to work back there and go ahead and spin the two, the four remaining bolts out. Okay, to get the cat out of the car, we need to remove this metal uh, heat shield that goes around the axle here. So there's going to be three 12 millimeter nuts, one here, one on the bottom, and then we're going to duck down from underneath. Now looking up towards the axle, you can see the third bolt here in the back. So we'll remove that. You can use an extension over the top and get to it. Now that the little heat shield is removed, you're going to pull the cat down, twist it counterclockwise, and start working the bottom of it out towards the hole here through the strut where the axle is. And you'll have to unplug the power steering pressure switch and you'll have to push the power steering hose flex it out of your way a little bit another tip to help get it out is go on the opposite side and turn the steering wheel fully to the right and what that does is it takes the tie rod and pulls the, pulls it inwards and then gives it more room right here to uh to work the cat out so once you get that done you can just pull the cat out like that 
Now that we got the cat out, we need to transfer the heat shields over to the new cat. So after transferring over the heat shield, the next step is to take our new uh, gasket here, and I'll link this up in the description also. And we're gonna reach up through the hole and install the, the new gasket on over the studs here. Now we're gonna feed the cat back in and slip it over the studs and start one of the bolts here from below. And, and then we'll put the all the heat shields and stuff back over the axle. So we'll nose the cat in, and as we're nosing it in, we'll rotate it clockwise and lift it up and put it over the studs. So after slipping it on and, and starting one bolt, you want to leave it loose. Now we can go ahead and plug in the electrical connector for the power string switch here, and we can start working in the heat shield that goes over the axle. So when I went to put the heat shield in, it didn't quite want to go in through the front here. So what I did was I, ducked, I took the heat shield and I ducked underneath and came from the back side. So I came from the back side like this and slid it over the axle and slid it into position. And then I now you can go ahead and start the, the three bolts and tighten those up. Now that you got the heat shield back into place and bolted up, I'm going to go ahead and lower the vehicle down and tighten the four nuts from the top. So the top two bolts are not going to be that hard to start. You just reach around the back and start the top two bolts. But the lower bolts, what I did was I put a little piece of paper in the socket and stuffed the, the nut into the... Uh, into the socket like that. Now that, that held the uh, nut in place, now I can reach around the back and start the, uh, the nut. Once you get them all started, you can go ahead and tighten them all down. You're not gonna be able to get a torque wrench back here to get to them, just tighten them down nice and snug and use a crisscross pattern. After that, you can lower the oxygen sensor back into, into the port, twist it back in and tighten it up. Once again, to tighten it up, I used my oxygen sensor socket like this with the extension, slipped it over the top, and then you just tighten it up until it's nice and snug. It has a little crush washer. You'll feel it crush down a little bit. You don't want to over tighten it. Okay, now that you got the vehicle back in the air, you can go ahead and take the support bracket here, swing it back into position, and start the bolt and tighten both of them up. Now that you got the support bracket resecure, you're going to take the oxygen sensor. And what I did was I twisted it counterclockwise like this, get the wire kind of twisted. And then, uh, then you Put it into position and then you let it untwist and it'll it'll actually thread itself into the manifold here and then you take your uh, oxygen sensor socket slip it on put your ratchet on and uh, tighten it until it's snug so you're going to tighten it a, a quarter turn or so after it's snug and that's about it you don't want to over tighten this now we want to pick out the old gaskets from the manifold pipe here and replace it with the factory uh, uh, gaskets i'll link these up in the description of the video so we're going to change out all three of the gaskets so I lifted the pipe back up into position, stuck it over the, uh, the cat back here, started the bolt, started the, uh, the 12 millimeter bolts for the hangers here, and then the three uh, vertical bolts here, and then the three vertical bolts here, started all of them. Then I torqued the front bolts here to 23 foot-pounds, the back ones here to 23 foot-pounds, and the ones at the back of the cat for 23 foot-pounds, and then the hangers I just tightened them up, I didn't torque them. Now you can lift this little cross bracing back into position and start the four 14 millimeter nuts and tighten those all down. After that, you can reinstall the tie rod in and tighten the bolt up and put a new cotter pin in. Make sure you use a new cotter pin. After that's done, you can reinstall the wheel and torque it down. So I will be putting links in the description of the video for all the parts and tools that I use. And that'll complete the job of replacing the bank one catalytic converter on a 2007 through 2013 Acura MDX with the 3.7 liter engine. I'm Brian Essa from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And I'd like to thank you again for watching.